the Supreme Court announces it will hear an abortion-related case this session. The high court will hear a challenge to Louisiana's Unsafe Abortion Protection Act. The law requires abortionists to have admitting privileges at a local hospital within 30 miles of the abortion facility. The case, called June Medical Services LLC versus Gee, is the first big abortion case granted since President Donald Trump's two Supreme Court appointees, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, took the bench. Abortion advocates claim the law could force the closure of some of the state's few remaining abortion facilities. The Supreme Court temporarily blocked the Louisiana law from taking effect back in February when Chief Justice John Roberts joined the court's four justices who are perceived as liberal and put it on hold. While the Supreme Court's new term began this week, arguments in that Louisiana case won't take place until the winter. A decision is likely to come at the end of June, about four months before the 2020 presidential election. Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry joins us now from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He asked the Supreme Court to review this case. And Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List, joins us from Washington, D.C. Thank you both for being here. It's great to be here. Great to be with you all. Attorney General, first off, what is the key question at hand the Supreme Court justices need to answer in this case? So basically, there are going to be two questions that the, the court is going to be looking at. Number one, does the state of Louisiana have the right to uh, require admitting privileges for doctors in abortion clinics? That, and that case is actually different. It's patently different from the Texas case. And then the second question is whether or not we're going to continue this abortion distortion uh, in, in, in the legal realm that allows third-party standing in these types of cases. And so it's really two great questions, uh, and we're excited to be before the court on both of them. Marjorie, the question everyone else is asking is, is this the case that could overturn Roe v. Wade? What's your response to that common question? Well, I, I wish it were that simple, and I wish it could be so. I think it's probably most likely that it will test the um, Planned Parenthood versus Casey undue burden test. So uh, is this an undue burden on the so-called right to an abortion for women? Um, I think it'll, it'll test and um, put into question some of the abortion jurisprudence throughout the uh, decades since Roe versus Wade. Um, and I think our great hope is that it would erode it. Um, it seems unlikely that it would completely overturn it, but the Supreme Court could, do, could use any case in, involving abortion law if it were really motivated to do so. My, my thought it would, would be that they would not, but uh, God is good, so we'll see. Attorney General, journalists are describing the Louisiana law as virtually identical to the Texas Hellerstadt law that did not hold up at the Supreme Court. But can you clarify, what are the distinctions? How does the Louisiana law differ from the Texas law? Well, a lot of what you hear is the propaganda from uh, those pro-abortion forces that are basically trying to say that Louisiana's law is identical to Texas. It's absolutely not true. In Hellestat, the state of Texas specifically carved out admitting privileges only for abortion clinics. That's not what happened here in Louisiana. Here in Louisiana, Representative Katrina Jackson, a black female Democrat, authored this law to basically bring abortion clinics inside of the regulatory scheme in Louisiana. So basically, we had an exception for abortion uh, clinics in Louisiana, and all we're doing is taking that exception really away, really in order to ensure the health and viability of women in Louisiana. Because anywhere else that those women go to any other health care clinic for any other a surgery or a procedure under which they'll be mildly sedated, those doctors are required to have admitting privileges. So we're just bringing those abortion clinics into the regulatory scheme and making sure that women at those clinics are treated the same as they're treated everywhere else in clinics around Louisiana. Marjorie, the decision in this case is expected just months before the presidential election. Do you expect the ruling could have an impact at the ballot box? 
Yes, I, I think that one effect of it will be to raise the profile of the issue so that it's a much discussed issue in the in the waning months of the campaign, which is good for us, especially given that the facts of this case wildly benefit the pro-life side. Almost every demographic polled in this gives us about a 70 percent advantage over the other side. That's looking at millennials, Democrats. Um, pretty much across the board, over 70 percent. If you can find that level of issue on your side in abortion um, and uh, in politics in general, you run with it. And this president um, uh, actually was over at the campaign today. Um, this president knows how important this issue is. He knows how it's not only the right thing to do, it's the politically smart thing to do, and this will help him. Attorney General abortion advocates claimed the process to get hospital admitting privileges was tedious and an undue burden. But from your understanding, is that true? No. In fact, what we've seen in Louisiana is that abortion clinics actually have, a lo have, have performed poorly in regards to procedures that they're performing on women. And so again, in Louisiana, if you go to any outpatient clinic, anyone, or for any other type of procedure, doctors in those clinics are required to have admitting privileges. Why wouldn't we do the same to safeguard the health care of women in Louisiana? And I, and I believe that the answer to that question by the Supreme Court is going to be yes. It's within the policing power of the state. Marjorie, is it beneficial to the pro-life movement that the Supreme Court is taking up this case? I think no question that it is. Um, we, regardless of the result, it will, it will again elevate this to a very public conversation on an issue that really, really um, cuts our way. Um, it really advantages the pro-life movement. It also highlights the hideous underbelly of so-called medicine that abortionists occupy in this country, and uh, and also highlights some of the will will if with our help and your help, Catherine, highlight some of the horrible scenarios, the horrible situations, such as the Gosnell Clinic and the, and then just recently um, the, the piling up of the broken bodies of children in that horrible abortionist um, office in Indiana. I think, you know, you can't help, but when you really look head on at what this issue is and you're hearing those stories, um, it, it uh, helps galvanize and form consensus in, um, in America in general, and that's good for the pro-life movement. Attorney General, to follow up on your last point, as a legal expert yourself, how likely do you think it is the high court will rule in favor of your state's law? Look, I like the chances that we have here in Louisiana and in front of this court. Uh, what's also interesting is that the court actually took up a cross petition that we filed, and that is whether or not actually the court will allow third party standings in these cases. In all other areas of the law, as you go before the court, the court requires that the party before them is the actually aggrieved party. But again, you know, we've created this abortion distortion uh, in, in, in the legal realm when it comes to abortion cases. And so the court taking that motion up, that writ, uh, I think is paramount. I think it's a great question before the court, and I think it'll have a huge impact on litigation moving forward if they answer, if they, if they basically say that, hey, we're going to treat all cases before the court the same, which they should because the law is supposed to be equal. Marjorie, finally, in February, Chief Justice Roberts sided with the four justices perceived as liberal, Kagan, Ginsburg, Sotomayor, and Breyer, to put Louisiana's law on hold. Does this signal anything to you about what the potential ruling may be? No, it really doesn't. Uh, A.G. Landry, you uh, will probably be better equipped to answer this question, but politically I would say we're always tempted to l listen to any of these decisions by the court uh, through a political filter. Um, what this was, in my understanding, was more of a procedural decision and procedural move so I would separate it from any uh, concerns about what the result of the, uh, from the Supreme Court will be. Attorney General, last word, any thoughts to that question? Yeah, I think, it's, I think she answered it well. I will tell you that, that, that I was excited. I, I, I did not look into this in any way in saying that Roberts was siding with the liberal uh, wing of the court. In, ba in fact, in the, in the uh, Oberfeld decision, or Hellstatt decision, uh, Judge Roberts dissented, so he would have upheld Texas's 
uh, mm -hmm. admitting privileges case. So, again, this is why I believe we've got great chances before the court. I think that what Justice Roberts did was stay the, the law so that we could take this court, I mean, take this case before the court. So, again, I, I look forward to getting before the court on these two questions, and I think it's going to have a significant impact on litigation moving forward. Really insightful conversation. Jeff Landry, Attorney General for the state of Louisiana, and Marjorie Dannenfelser, President of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you.